Did you know that the biggest tree in the world is called General Sherman? It's home, the USA. Near the coast, in the forests of Northern California, there are trees that make the fir trees we know from home look like blades of grass. If a tree like this is in the way of a new road, there are two options, drive around or through it, like in this case. Despite the tunnel, this giant redwood is perfectly healthy. But what is the secret behind these trees growing to these enormous heights? For the biologists amongst us, the Latin name for these trees is Sequoia sempervirens. They are thousands of years old and originate from a time when the USA was only inhabited by Indians. But why do these humongous trees grow to heights of over 100 meters? Shana DeHart and Vanessa Williams know everything about giant sequoias. The tree experts are out and about in the treetops every day to monitor the development of this ecosystem. Almost like when in the mountains, the downhill part is always the most fun. An interesting job where Vanessa and her team also get to let tourists in on the secrets of the redwoods. We're in like a 400-year-old Christmas tree right now, so Merry Christmas. Um, <laughs> these used to be the tallest tree in the world. We log these trees a lot, use them for toothpicks, so... Um, they're no longer the tallest. Today, only 3% of the original amount of giant trees is still in existence in California. Among the remaining ones, we can find the biggest in the world. For Shana and Vanessa, this is a fascinating job. 96 feet in the air. Is that the highest no. part? Um, this is the highest platform. Okay. Yeah. So this is my favorite platform of all because we're so high up right now and we only have 15 feet ahead of us. The tallest redwood in the world is 380 feet tall. It is called Hyperion and it is the highest tree on earth. This giant redwood is 115 meters tall and higher than some cathedrals. But volume wise, it is not the record holder. This is the gigantic General Sherman tree. Standing at 83 meters and with a tree trunk diameter of 11 meters, this is the biggest redwood tree on Earth. Experts have conducted research where they counted the tree rings and they think it is 2,500 years old. But how does a tree grow this high? For a start, it has gigantic roots that support it. They grow around the tree in a 30 meter radius. Redwoods don't. They have very shallow roots. They go down about like 8 to 12 feet and they go out really far and interlock with other trees, which keeps them strong, but that means that it's going to sway. So, um, heads up, these trees are going to start swaying. Yes, really. It is very easy to bring these trees into motion, but the roots are not responsible for their height. Scientists assume that the trees reach such tremendous heights here because it is often very foggy here. The fog always brings enough moisture to the trees, whose crowns are so high up. This means that they don't have to draw the water up from the ground through their roots and transport it upwards themselves. You could say that the trunk is the tree's biggest root. The redwoods of California are not only the biggest trees on Earth, but are also the fastest growing ones. An average redwood grows by 1.2 meters a year. In comparison, a European birch only manages 50 centimeters. Did you know that the longest building in the world is located on a German island? Prora, also called the Monster by the Sea, is a total of 4.5 kilometers long. A building with a history that couldn't be more controversial. Built by the Nazis, used by the GDR regime. Would you have thought that Prora is the longest youth hostel in the world today and is supposed to become a holiday paradise due to the luxury flats that are being built there? 
but how will this complex be able to take the step to the future without it being forgotten what happened here? At the southern end, the old ruins have already turned into a 500 meter long building site. Architect Ulrich Stuka has taken on a mammoth project with Prora. 2,500 windows have already been replaced by his team and 8,000 tons of rubble were extracted from only one tract of the building. The mission? To turn the lost place Prora into a luxury resort. Soon, new noble roof terraces with a sea view are supposed to exist here. What the investors are counting on is the fantastic location of the building right by the sea. Prora is located on Rügen, the biggest German island at the most northeasterly point of the Republic, right by the Baltic Sea. Per year, here there are about 100 hours of sun more than in Munich. 56 kilometers of sandy beaches attract about 1.5 million holidaymakers and nature lovers per year. The very appealing location was also the reason for Prora being built here. Did you know that Adolf Hitler had it built as a propaganda project in 1936? The building's developer was the NS organization KDF, which means strength through joy, whose goal it was to create a holiday resort for 20,000 Germans. Eight blocks were built along the coast from 1936 onwards, and a gigantic festival hall was also planned, but it was never constructed. Holiday makers also never arrived here, as in 1939, the Second World War broke out. This meant that the project had to be stopped. All that is left of the monster by the sea is the shell of the building. In block one, the structure of the building was not in a safe condition anymore, so it had to be torn down, combining the present and the past. This is the big challenge for the architects in Prora today. Next to the rundown building, the big surprise. Here, there are some beautiful, already finished apartment blocks. About one-third of the 4.5-kilometer Colossus has already been done up, and, opposed to back in the day, the holidaymakers will be even closer to the Baltic Sea thanks to their own balconies. This view makes you easily forget that you are in the longest building complex in the world. Of the originally eight blocks, there are only five left. These were used by the National People's Army of the GDR when it was still in existence. In 1989, Karl Bersel attended military school in Prora. Today, the 46-year-old is visiting the old detention cells in the former access control house. Cells like these used to exist in every block. Without a trial, soldiers were locked up here for up to 10 days. Prora became the biggest military facility in the GDR. Karel would never have dreamed that he would return to Prora 30 years later, and he would have expected even less that he would one day buy two apartments here. But that is exactly what he has done. They are located in the same block as the military academy used to be in. Others condemn the decision to turn the historic building into a holiday resort. But what else could be done with this colossus? refurbish it at cost to the state? Too expensive at this size. This is why the government has sold four of the five blocks to private investors. Did you know that Prora has another record to show for itself? Yes, it houses the longest youth hostel in the world in block five. Dennis Brosite has been the manager since it opened in 2011. For the start of the season, he has to get 96 rooms ready, which offer accommodation for over 420 guests. What very few of them know, the 840 windows are not all the same size and therefore needed to be specially made. An incredible structure with an amazing history. Prora, the longest building in the world. These pupils have several thousand schoolmates because it's the largest school in the world. Did you know it has 47,000 students, 2,000 classrooms and 2,500 teachers? <coughs> Lucknow in India. 47,000 kids and teenagers. Whether by scooter, by bus or by bicycle rickshaw, they're all on their way to the same school.
Anshu shows us how she manages to cope with thousands of schoolmates. She attends the 11th grade. In a moment, her second class starts, maths. Yeah, for us Indians, our children, we are completely used to being surrounded by people because we have, many students have joint family. Also in the roads and all, you know, there's so much of hustle and bustle and traffic and Indian roads are <laughs> full of people and that's the same in school also, 50-50 students, but we, it's all, you know, comfortable, happy, <laughs> happy people. So it's not much of a deal. The teachers don't call the students by their names, but by numbers. And a special was the one. Can you imagine a teacher memorizing up to 600 names? There are a lot of children in a school, so in order to just identify in any case, an ID card works because that not everyone of not the every staff of a school knows each and every child. So just for their sake to know us at any time. They can see an iCard and identify us. The Mega School is a private institution with 27 buildings and schoolyards. The parents pay fees of up to 100 euros a month. Even though every class has an average of 50 to 60 students, the numbers are still rising. Even chemistry or computer sciences are taught in front of 50 students at the same time. There are over 20 teachers for the sixth graders alone. Halpreti is one of them. She is responsible for more than 500 students on her floor. It's history lesson now. Today's topic, India during the Stone Age. Open your books. Page 28. Class in India works like this. The teacher speaks and the students listen. There's no trick. Uh, you just need to get across to them. And if they understand that this particular time which we get in this 30-35 minutes. They know that they have to understand the course content and for which they have to be attentive. And when they have their assessments, their tests, they will not be getting good grades. They have their long break after the third lesson. Did you know these are the only 15 minutes in which the students are allowed to move around freely? The breaks take place time delayed with these thousands of students. First, it's sixth to eighth grade. At 10.30 a.m., it's the elementary school students' turn. While they are enjoying their break and eat their sandwiches, some eighth graders are drilled. The exercises are supposed to promote discipline and the community spirit. competition at the largest school in the world is immense. If you want to be one of the best, you have to perform very well. Anshu has performed well. Uh, these are the meritorious students of the 10th class board examinations. Those who scored above 90%. Would you believe overachievers are greatly respected in India? With more than a billion inhabitants, only the best obtain one of these sought-after college places. the goal is to get a good photograph click because then if you get a bad photograph click, everyone will make fun of you because all the students pass from here and they point and they laugh if your photograph is not good <laughs> so if you get if you're sure of getting a good percentage my advice is get a good photograph click <laughs> at 2 p.m. sharp school is finally over 47,000 students want to go home as fast as possible many are picked up by their parents The so-called transport managers take care of the rest of them. They coordinate the school-owned carpool and ensure all the students arrive home safely. But tomorrow, everything will start all over again at the largest school in the world.
Isa Ram in northeast India. Here, the small village of Bhaktang is located. Preparations for a photo shoot, but this isn't going to be a normal family portrait, because this isn't a normal family. This is Sayona Chana, his 39 wives, and his 94 children. Altogether, they are the biggest family in the world. 181 people under one roof in a 4,000 square meter large villa with 100 rooms. Life in XXL, 80 kilos of rice per day. And a washing line that is 100 meters long. A family of superlatives whose children make up a whole school class by themselves. And the football teams only consist of brothers. A mega family that works like clockwork. Thirty-nine women are married to the same man. Completely normal for the Chanas. His first wife, the man of the house, married when she was a teenager. Every morning, 75-year-old San Tiangi holds morning roll call. As the oldest wife, she is in charge of the household. The other women respect her authority. Santiangi always has the final say in the house and when it comes to issues with the children. It has been this way for the past 58 years. The married life of the Chanas has very strict rules. Rule number one, Santiangi is the boss in the household. Number two, each wife may only share the bed with the patriarch for one week. Number three, only four women take care of the husband at the same time. Can you imagine that Sayona Chana's children and grandchildren make up one-fifth of all pupils in the village? Week. Sayona Chana is able to support his family without any help from the state. A big reason for this is his carpenter's workshop. And as there are hardly any furniture shops in Mizoram, his handmade goods are real best sellers. The company is a real family business. All the employees are his own sons. My mother is 12. 12 of my mother work. Carpentry he kapa min zirtira niya kan bhai hiya chuan. Kan uten kan ute lau zirtira kan uten kai mani min zirtir vele chong zela chuan. I i kapa hiya zinga trangin kan ti tur hi asoi thap thap zela chut yang chuan kan ti top zel mai. While the sons have to work till 2 p.m., their mothers come back from the fields with the harvest. They have brought about 50 kilos of vegetables back with them. <laughs> Cooking for 181 people. This requires 80 kilos of rice and 17 kilos of vegetables. But life in a big family also means a lot of fun. After work, the children like to spend their free time by playing football or by cooling off in the swimming pool. Would you have thought that Sayona Chana built this himself too? Despite the family already being XXL, he still wants to enlarge his family. Manipur and Ive can chaka and trunk roll and beam top main. Oh, 
And at dinner, everything is regulated too. Each wife is sat at her own table with her children. 181 people that are perfectly in tune with each other. The biggest family in the world. Be it Valentine's or Mother's Day, for every occasion there is the befitting rose. With a length of up to 1 meter 80, this is the biggest rose in the world. But do you actually know where it comes from? We are traveling to Ecuador, one of the biggest exporters of cut flowers. One of the biggest rose farms in the country is in Machatzi. And among all the colorful varieties, Freedom, the biggest rose in the world. It can grow to a size of up to 180 centimeters. Juan Paulo is the boss of this rose empire. He knows exactly what customers all over the world want. Los rusos, por ejemplo, los rusos se habla de que entre más largo sea el tallo, más largo es el amor o la, el sentimiento que usted le está expresando a la otra persona. Altogether, Juan Paolo owns three gigantic farms. 950,000 roses grow on this farm alone, all at the same time, a sea of thousands of roses. They are so big that we can hardly see the blooms. Pues yo creería que ahora que hay tanta heteros y homo, entonces ya se ha vuelto un poco de todo. Hay regalos, eh, flores especiales para los gays, flores especiales para Los mismos hombres realmente yo creería que hoy en día And here it is, the biggest rose in the world. At 1 meter 60, it is as big as a human. The flowering plant is the basis for the huge roses. It has deep roots and grows best in the clay and nutrient-rich ground of the Andes. Would you have thought that each of these roses later will become a bulging rose bush? The day for the rose workers already begins at sunrise. Susanna, her daughter Bianca, and her husband Edison live on 36 square meters. The rose family catch the bus to work every day. Edison begins by making a small cut in the outer layer of the rootstock. Then he removes the bud, the so-called eye, from another variety of rose and puts it inside the bark. To finish, he secures the laceration with a special sticky tape. Estamos limpiándole los patrones porque tenemos también que que le pegue la 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 luz para que la yema que se va a injertar se vaya que se pegue más rápido y no se no se pudra. Now Mother Nature takes its course. Did you know that due to the thin air and the cold nights, the roses grow more slowly here than normal? This makes the stems grow thicker and the plants don't break as easily under their own weight. Four months later, the roses have outgrown the farm workers. Susanna has to cut each stem separately. What I like most is to cut the flower, because the work is more... Esa más es avanzada aquí porque ya trabajo tiempos. Ya me gusta el trabajo. Esa está más la flor. 90,000 roses fall victim to the clippers every day. After this, the farm workers pull the freshly harvested roses out of the greenhouses on a wire rope hoist. Each one carries 24 baskets at two kilos each. Right after the harvest, the roses take a 35 second shower. This way vermin don't stand a chance. On average, the roses reach a length of 1 meter 40, but some specimens manage to exceed the 180 centimeter mark. In the end, the huge roses cost 10 euros per piece, but only a fraction of the profit is for Juan Paulo. Pues un 30% se va en logística y transporte. Todo lo que tiene que ver con logística y transporte. El 10% 
se va en lo que es las aduanas y clareo de lo mismo, 10%. Un 30% que es lo que se gana el importador en el país donde llegue la flor. Y un 25% que son los costos de producir la, la flor, que haría solamente un 5% para el productor de la flor. Over 13,000 roses are checked, weighed and packaged in the factory every day. So this is what it looks like, the journey of the biggest rose in the world. Isn't it almost too beautiful to be true? This mega pool looks a bit like a delusion of grandeur. A gigantic pool that is big enough to ride a boat in it. But do you know where this pool, the biggest in the world, can be found? We do some research and find out. The largest pool in the world is located in Chile. In Santiago, everyone knows the humongous paddling pool. So we arrange a meeting with the boss of the pool company. There he comes, the mega pool builder. Of course, in proper style in a mega expensive sports car. This man is behind it all. Fernando Fishman, by now, builds structures like this all over the world. Mr. Fishman? Yes, I am. For a viewing of a regular pool, flip-flops would be enough. But in this case, a helicopter is more adequate. Our destination, the holiday resort of Alfonso del Mar a super modern, gigantic hotel on the coast. There you can see San Alfonso, my first project. And there it is, the mother of all swimming pools. Would you have thought that 250 million liters of water fit inside there? If you wanted to go on a walk along the side of the pool, it might take a little while as it is one kilometer long. And we even discover a sailing boat. It took four years and cost a whole four million euros to build the water feature, an artificial sea right by the sea. I remember sitting on the beach, thinking, that's it, there was nothing here. Only sand. Today, there is a complex with 1,300 holiday homes. The mega pool is the highlight. But how does this make sense? A gigantic pool right next to the sea. The explanation? Due to the strong current, swimming here is far too dangerous. Also, an arctic stream never lets the water temperature rise above 16 degrees. Or would you have thought that penguins even live here? Of course, something like this doesn't attract tourists. And that is the reason for the mega pool. It is filled with heated seawater. Underground pipes keep replenishing it from the sea. This way, the water level remains the same. The newly developed filtration technique is so innovative that Fernando Fishman sells it all over the world. 300 projects all over the globe already use it. The bottom of the pool is not tiled as per usual, but is made from a special kind of sheeting that was especially developed for this project. Because the water is so clear, the material has to be extremely resistant to UV light. Just like any other pool, it has to be cleaned regularly. Siegfriedo Grimau is responsible for this. For over 10 years, he's been taking care of the upkeep of the pool. Every day, the floor has to be cleaned. That's about 80,000 square meters, almost the size of eight football fields. On a boat and dragging a hose behind him, he makes his way through the water. Este bote lleva en la parte posterior un carro que va succionando, aspirando la arena que pueda caer en las zonas de playa o el sedimento que se va al fondo. Eso es aspirado por este carro a través de esa manguera que va flotando, se eh, succiona este material 
por una bomba y regresa filtrado a la laguna. The whole procedure takes about eight hours. Sifrido Grimau also has to test the quality of the water. Because the water is never completely exchanged, the quality has to be monitored constantly. But the guests don't notice any of this. On holiday, it is cocktail time by the biggest pool in the world. This is it, the Coco de Mer, the biggest nut in the world. But did you know that these nuts are sold for up to 1,000 euros? The exorbitant nut only grows on two islands in the Seychelles, which are only accessible with a special permit from the government. But how does the nut grow and where exactly can it be found? Ranger Dennis will show us. We are here at Belaghe. In the middle of the trail, we have a huge area where we can see uh, lots, lots and lots of coco de mer. For example, up there, we can see all the green palms on the mountain. All of it is coco de mer. But from that distance, uh, we cannot tell if it's male or female. Yes, actually, there's one there. Next to it, I can find something. When the nuts are ripe, they fall off the palm trees just like coconuts. Oh, yeah, there. So... That's actually the female fruit. Okay, now we can see a female coco de mer fruit that uh, probably just fallen down like uh, uh, one week maximum. And we can also see the green gecko on it. Uh, he will be the one carrying the uh, pollen grain from the male flower and then go to the female tree and then enter the, the a small, there's a small fruit like that, they will enter, meet the flower inside, and that's everything will start from there and until it will fall down like that. It takes seven years for a nut to be ripe, and that is exactly why they are so valuable and rare. So, geckos are responsible for their conception, as their job is the pollination. As you can see, it's really, really big. Dennis has found a real beauty for us. To crack this nut, he has to use all his strength. As a nutcracker, he uses a stone. With lots of force, he repeatedly throws the nut onto it so that the shell breaks. Then he has to only uncover the seed. So it's uh, something really, really special. But now what I will do is that I put them like that. Well, that, and I will show you normally it should be like that. So one fruit, one fruit inside the same skin. The shell of the coco de mer reminds us of a woman's lower body, and that is why it's considered to be a kind of natural Viagra. The workers extract the pulp, and every single nut is also measured and weighed. Everything is done by hand. Everywhere there are bars and cameras, almost like in a high security prison. Safety. 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 People will come and stole it, uh -huh. make big money with that. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. okay. The shells and the pulp are sold separately, so each nut is sawn apart in the middle. On the inside, no coconut milk. So there it is. The one that is cut. The pulp of the coco de mer is much harder than that of a normal coconut. So you have to be very careful not to damage the, the shell because it's going to sell it. So you have to be very careful. The pulp is mainly exported to Asia as an aphrodisiac. A kilo costs 85 euros. So from a nut with seven kilos of pulp, that makes 600 euros. But what is actually worth more, the pulp or the shell? For us, it's the inside. Uh -huh. For the, the authorities, it's the shell. With wood glue, the workers stick the shell back together. Depending on the size, the now completely empty shell of the nut is worth another 200 to 400 euros. Like this, the pulp isn't ready to be sold yet. It needs to be washed. But the flesh of the fruit is extremely firm. As opposed to normal coconuts, it doesn't suck up any of the water. So 
When it's dry, it crack. The inside crack. Okay, it's much harder than before, you see? Like, like stone. If it falls on your feet, it can. The expensive pulp is sent by air freight. Then we pack it. And the shell is also a top seller. From the shells of the biggest nut in the world, sculptures for the living room at home are made. The Coco de Mer, all in all, an incredible nut.